Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake and I would like to thank you for joining me today on Wednesday at two o'clock my time here in the middle of the country. Um, it's going to be fun. We're still working on Jim the Pillow. But before I get there, I should tell you that the uh, quilts behind me, Spring Bling, the class that I'm teaching online with MJ Kinman, it's up. It's really, really live. We actually have students who've started taking it. It's fun. Um, just in case you don't know MJ, let me show you this picture. There she is with me over there behind the quilt. Um, MJ does gem quilts and I do applique and this class is about machine applique, which I've done before. I know how to do. I definitely know how to teach it. Um, but that's what the class, this class is about. It's how to use her freezer paper templates for traditional piecing. And my way to use freezer paper templates for turned edge machine applique with options to do fusible if you'd like. So it's a wonderful class. You can find it on Creative Spark. I encourage you to take it because it, it's really good and these it makes nice quilts. Okay. So back to Jim the Pillow, because we are in week number four on Jim the Pillow, and there will indeed be a week number five. Let's pick up where we left off. Oop. Wait. I'm going to begin with his face, because having his face blank, to be perfectly honest, it just sort of creeps me out. So face first. I have gone over and made the lines, my pencil lines, a little bit stronger, which is good. I can see them better. If I have to add more, I can. I am going to start with his eyes because they are the window to the soul. I know I'm going to do black inside the pupil of the eye. I know I'm going to want white for the highlights in his eyes because that will make him look perky and alive. But then for the color of his eyes, I'm going to combine several different colors of 12 weight pearl cotton because Jim's eyes are not really green and they're not really gold and they're not really yellow. They're a combination of the three. I've chosen a variety of threads from my stash. This is a 12 weight Presencia. These are also 12 weight and they are from Aurafil. They're a little bit shinier than the Presencia, which I think will be nice in the eyes. This is an 8 weight pearl cotton and I think it'll be nice for the highlight. We'll see. I may want to jump to a 12 weight as well for the highlight. Not sure yet. And then I also pulled out this pink because see his little nose there? The cat's nose is pink. And I don't need to be totally literal, but I do want to put in a little bit of pink in his nose. You might imagine that I have lots and lots and lots of thread. But remember when I cleaned out my thread collection not long ago, I have enough thread, but it's not like I've got a giant amount of thread to choose from. I do, however, have all of the Aurafil 12 weight threads that you can see in these two sets, and they are getting me pretty far. So these sets are the two different glorious Cantha sets. They're nice. And then I've got quite a bit of the Presencia balls of thread. Got a lot of that. And then I've also got some variegated threads that you can find on the website. But it's not like I've got a room full of thread, but I'm guessing neither do you. So when you are choosing your threads, look at everything you've got. And if you need to do what I'm doing, which is in order to get the right color for the eyes, you end up combining more than one thread, you can do that. Okay, so that's a suggestion. You'll see how that worked out with the three colors for the eyes. Anyway, um, 
the thing is, I really don't have enough colors of thread, but I, I have a lot. I have a lot of colors of thread, so I'm being judicious in my shopping. Um, while I would love for you to buy every thread I've got online, I also know that we all have budgets, so just be careful. Use, use what you've got, fill in where you need to. Okay, um, sewing the pupils. And I want to emphasize here that very fine precision embroidery is not what I'm doing. I'm sure I could do it if that's what I was interested in because, yeah, yeah, I think I could. But it is not what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in something a little more improvisational, a little more not precision. <laughs> so keep that in mind while you're watching. I'm using my number nine Bowen Cruel Embroidery Needle with the 12 weight pearl cotton from Aurifil. I'm going to sew with a single strand of thread and I want to fill in this space. I could go back and forth, short stitches across the eye, but you know the cat's pupil is long and so it feels to me like these stitches ought to be longer. But I don't want to do giant long stitches that are going to then maybe be loose and, and wear easily on the front of the pillow. So even while I'm going to be creative, I want to think through how the stitches are going to wear. So it's how they look, but also how they're going to wear. I don't need to worry about the tail of thread shadowing through because it's hidden beneath two layers of fabric. And this is my plan. I'm going to make improvisational stitches next to each other in varying widths. I don't want it to feel like a formal satin stitch. I turned the work in my hand because I want to continue making my stitches from right to left. And I'm moving the thread away from me to get it out of my way while I'm sewing. I'm laying the, these stitches down next to each other. But because they are irregular in length, I don't think they look like a traditional satin stitch. I'm good with that because I'm going to put the highlight next to the pupil there and then I'm going to fill this in with color. And even though there's a little bit of gap between those two stitches, remember this is improvisational. I'm not going to worry about that. It doesn't need to be perfect. I want it to appear to be drawn. I'm going to knot my thread on the back and sew the other pupil and then I will be back with you. Okay, let's take a moment and think about what I mean when I say improvisational. I think a little bit about improvisational acting or comedy where what happens from one character is picked up and used by the next, but it's not always in a way you think is going to happen. So in my pillow, in this particular embroidery project, each thing I do contributes to the way I do the next thing. And as I said, I'm not doing precision here. I'm not doing little tiny single strand embroidery floss it precision. Bigger, more exciting is what I'm after. The other thing is when I'm talking about how stitches will wear, where I intend to use this pillow is on the sofa and I may use it as a lumbar, the actual lumbar pillow that I use that I sit against when I'm sewing that looks nice when I'm not sitting on it. So this isn't going to be purely decorative, and I know I'm going to be up against it, so I am taking that into consideration with every stitch I make. All right, so remember I said 
I was moving on to do the eyes. And I did, I did this video and I showed you how I did all those different colors. And can I just say, those eyes turned to, they were just too scary. I made them and I thought, do I really like that? <laughs> do I, is Jim really that mean looking? I had forgotten, you know, that in scary movies, when you've got cats, how their eyes can kind of glow yellow. So I cut those stitches off and the idea to use more than one color in the eye, well, that's not all the way bad. But those colors turned out not to be a good idea. All right, so I'm going to pick you up with what I did after I cut all those stitches off. So the somewhat evil looking yellow eyes have been removed. I'm going to replace with green. I'm going to bring my needle up at the pupil and work out from there, continuing to bring my needle up at the pupil. What I can do is pull the thread out and get an idea of where to put the needle in and then look at where to bring it out. Don't pull your stitches too tight. And I am going to leave maybe just a little bit of gap between some of these stitches so it doesn't look too overdone. Now if you wanted it to have more stitches, you could certainly do that. And if I wanted to add another color, maybe blue in with this, I could. And you can probably see, because I can see, there's a little bit of that yellow fuzz left. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave the yellow fuzz. And where before I stitched all the way around the bottom of the pupil, here, that is so close that I'm not going to. Now, I really want to be going up at the pupil here. So I'm going to have to move my needle that way so that now I can continue to sew and bring my needle up at the pupil. And that leaves quite a bit of gap between those stitches. And I'll do it again here. I think that's okay. And if it's not, I can go back and fill in. I want the color to radiate out from the dark part of the eye, just like this. Ow, shoot, poked myself again. I'm going to continue in this manner. I'll knot my thread on the back, move to the other eye, finish it, and then I'll come back and show you the highlight that I'm going to add to each eye. Oh yeah, the green looks better. <laughs> the green looks better, don't you think? Way less scary. And I like the orange of the body of the cat shining through, and that's going to carry through all the rest of the embroidery I do. So, yay, it's doing it. Uh, I wanted to say I was using a 12 weight, uh, 12 weight cotton thread there for the green. It was the Aurifil. It's got a little more shine. Single strand, not double strand. Okay. So the next one is adding the highlight because, ooh, look, see, you can look at my eyes. You can look at anybody's eyes. See those bits of white that are there? That's, that's what makes us look perky. Here we go. I have both the Presencia and the Aurifil 12 white pearl cotton, and the Aurifil is a little shinier. So that is what I've threaded up with because it's a highlight. In my original drawing, 
the highlights occupy this territory. So what I'm going to do is let it straddle the pupil. And in this case, I probably will let these stitches be a little closer together than the green is. And the highlights don't have to be huge because what this is, is the reflection of the light that was shining on Jim's eye when I took the photograph. And you know, sometimes those highlights are really big and sometimes they are small. And in most cases, the highlight is kind of the same on both eyes. So for example, if I put a highlight here and then one way over here, that would look weird. Now I'm going to put a similar highlight on his other eye. I'm still using a single strand of pearl cotton. That's what I used for the pupil on the eye and for the color. I thought about doing these with a French knot, but again, I think a French knot there would just be totally weird looking. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. I'm going to knot my thread on the back and then I'm going to add some pink stitching over his nose. And if I can decide what I want to do his whiskers out of, I may have that done when I come back to you. We'll just have to see. Okay, so Kay, yes, thank you for noticing the green really is better. And Kay also asked, um, do I like mixing up different weights of thread? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because remember that what this really is, is drawing with thread. And in the same way that you can draw with pencils, I mean, think about it. If you are drawing, sketching something on paper and you've got, say, a medium hard pencil, if you draw lightly with a really sharp point, you make a fine line. If your point gets blunter and you push harder, you make a darker line. And if you push really hard, you make an even darker line. And each one of those lines has a different expression. So by varying the weights of your thread, you are varying the expression of the line. Inside the body of the cat, mostly I want his features to not stick out so much. So I'm sticking with the 12 weight. If I wanted something to be much finer, I would go to a 16 weight pearl cotton. And 16 weight I used to carry, and I don't much anymore because I don't have room for all kinds of thread, but 16 weight is really very similar to like a 30 weight cotton or a hand quilting thread. So you could substitute, say, um, you know, any of your 30 weight uh, cottons on the spool. You could embroider with those. I mean, it's thread, right? <laughs> You're sewing. You could do that. So there are many, many options for the kinds of threads you can use and combine in your, in your embroidery. Okay, so the next thing, the next thing. Okay, I'm going to be showing you the, the next video. And I, I'm talking about um, the flowers that are coming next. And let's see, where am I? I'm right there. Uh, I want you to notice the way I hold the fabric in my hand to sew. Um, and you will see the whiskers and the nose are done. Okay, here we go. I'm really happy with the eyes. I'm happy with the nose. It's just a hint of color. It makes me happy. I decided to go ahead and fill in whiskers. Jim's whiskers are white, but I didn't want to do white, so I did them with a 12 weight pearl cotton in pale blue. And it reads almost gray here. So now I need to work on the other fun stuff. And I have decided to pull inspiration from the fabric behind him. I love these little Sputnik things. And my plan is to 
start with some Sputnik designs, maybe with French knots and clusters of French knots at the end where the little balls are. And then I'm going to build flowers. I'm not entirely sure what these flowers will look like now. That's the improvisational part for me. I'm going to sit and sew. Once I get some done, I can come back and share the techniques I used with you. Okay, so that was an old note to pay attention to um, how I was holding stuff because um, <laughs> obviously I wasn't holding anything. But aren't the whiskers cute? I just used a back stitch there for the whiskers. And I just, you know, did some lines with the pink for the nose. And then I decided after looking at just the fabric that really I needed to get something drawn on paper. So I pulled my iPad back out and I doodled flowers. And you're seeing the finished drawing, which is very sketchy. You know, I drew some stuff, I erased it, I drew some stuff, I erased it. But I got the general position and size of the flowers that I wanted to do that have the spokes. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do daisies on the tail, but right now that still sounds like an okay plan. Uh, let's see here. What is this? So then the next thing I did was print out that piece of paper. And it's not to scale, but I figured it was close enough. I laid the embroidery project on my sandboard and I used my 602 pencil, the same thing I've been drawn with on the fabric with so far. And I just sketched in the crossbars. And I was careful to vary the directionality of the lines so that they weren't all like straight up and down and then diagonal this way. I want I want some movement there. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. So there, you can see it a little bit better. I hope you can see where I drew the, the lines and it's important. Notice, let's see, I'm going to go back one. Notice that the, the flowers are not all totally encased in the body of Jim that I pulled some of the flowers down to his edge and you only see a little bit of them. That helps to add to the implication that he is a three-dimensional object, not just a flat two-dimensional cutout. So I did that with my pencil. I just sketched in little lines and I think they work. Okay, then I started sewing and I decided to use a 12 weight white pearl cotton for the crossbars and I did a back stitch. Um, and you'll notice not all of my back stitches are like perfectly dead on straight, making a crisp, perfect line. No, <laughs> they're not all like that. That's okay. It's improvisational. I'm going to be filling it in with more stuff. But at the end where those uh, Sputnik things have balls, I decided to put French knots. And I thought I would share French knotting with you. So here we go. I decided to do the spokes of the flowers in white to parallel what's in the fabric behind. I like the look of it. The stitches that I'm using are the back stitch for the arms of these spokes and French knots at the ends. I decided not to cross threads at the very, very center. I think I'm going to come back and do some more French knots there or something. I'm going to do something there, but I don't know exactly what color that will be, so I'm ignoring it for now. The way I'm sewing these is that I am starting with French knots, I'm sewing across, I'm ending with French knots, and then I have a very secure knot at either end. I'm not carrying threads from one side to the other. And in most cases, I'm putting three French knots, but in some cases, I'm just putting one or two. I'm playing that by ear. And I'm doing both two wrap and three wrap French knots, just to vary the sizes. 
Last night when I was sewing, I was ending with this flower and I got to right there and my French knot became a knot before I was ready for it to become a knot, which was a real pain. So I still need to add my cluster of French knots here. I'm using a 12 weight pearl cotton from Presencia. There's my ending knot. And again, I do not have to worry about tails of thread showing because I've got two layers of fabric here, not just the cat, but the back of the pillow. I'm going to bring it up. I want to show you how to do a French knot. French knots are a two-handed operation. I'm right-handed, so I have my needle in my right hand. I'm going to take the thread and pull it gently to the left come under the thread and wrap it once, twice, three times. And then you can put your finger over those wraps and come back here. I have done this both ways. I have put my needle back in right through that hole where the threads come out of the fabric I have also moved the tip of the needle just slightly away from that hole. And that's really the way I like to do them because I have been known to make French knots that pull right through and this seems to me to be more secure. Once you get that there, tighten the thread down and hold that down. And when I mean that, hold that tail of thread out of the way and then work the needle through and pull it down. This is a pillow that's going to be used. I do not want these things to be too loose where in another embroidery project I might not worry about you know a little looseness between the knot and the fabric here I'm I'm paying attention so when I come up for the next knot I'm really going to sink that stitch tight did you notice how it pulled the French knot down I want to make another one I'm going to pull that down. Now here, I have been known to use my thumbnail to hold those thread wraps close to the fabric. Just like that. I can come in and add one more French knot right here. What I might do with this one though is only do a two wrap knot so that it's not quite as big as the other two. And what I'm doing here, I'm holding that thread tight. I'm using my thumbnail to push the wraps down the shaft of the needle. I'm going to pull that through. And now I'm going to knot my thread on the back. And you can see my tails of thread. Under other circumstances, that would drive me crazy. But here, it really doesn't. I have been using my regular ending knot. And to do that, you catch a little bit of the background fabric. This is not going to show on the front. That anchors the knot. Then I'm going to come back through. See that loop? I'm going to go bottom to top through that loop. And then here, so I don't pull the knot from the front through to the back, I'm going to hold that down and tighten that knot. And then cut it, leaving a tail of thread. I need to finish these spokes and here and here and here before I move on to the next thing. Okay, so one other little tidbit. You know when you're holding your fabric that you've made your French knot and the needle is going down through the fabric. You've got your thumb here. How can I hold this? You've got your thumb on top holding that down. Sometimes on the underside where the needles poke through, you can grab the needle with these two fingers below to help hold it upright while you 
are positioning everything so that you keep it tight. I hope that made sense. It might not. But while you're making your French knots, I think it could. Uh, okay, it's 30 minutes. See, this is why we have to have one more week because now I want to fill in with different stitches in between the spokes. I'm going to do a combination of different things. Some detached chains, some straight stitches. I'm not entirely sure what, but those two for sure. So, next week. <laughs> next week will be the last part, I am pretty sure, of Jim the Pillow. And I hope you guys are enjoying this, because I am. It's fun. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I think that's it. Feel free to email me with questions. I am happy to answer them. People email me pretty often. Uh, and I will see you next week on Wednesday at 2 o'clock Central Time. And until then, may you have many happy stitches. Thanks for joining me. Stay well and be happy. Okay, we're going now.